An estimated 6.2 million Americans have Alzheimer's disease. And even today, we don't really know for sure how to prevent it, cure it, or even treat it. Now, Alzheimer's is a horrible disease, right? We call it the long goodbye. It's one of many tragic diseases and conditions that haven't seen much progress in treatments yet. So I'm standing here today with you because I'm part of a team, a team that just finished a proof of concept set of tests that could, with additional research, provide a viable way for us to treat Alzheimer's and other neurodegenerative diseases. So I select Alzheimer's. Imagine you're a medical doctor, savvy enough to realize that recent advancements could be used in, a, in an entirely different way to treat diseases outside of the human body and without drugs. And further suppose you were going to select a disease to concentrate on that would, with some progress, make a pretty good media splash and attract the attention of the medical community. With those two assumptions, you'd probably pick a devastating and uncured disease that affects millions of people worldwide. Um, if you were also a neurologist, you'd undoubtedly be compelled to address Alzheimer's. I happen to know such a person, and I'll share more about him in a bit. There's also a secondary reason to pick Alzheimer's, and that is, if we could solve the Alzheimer's puzzle, we could solve the puzzle for many other diseases, and by the time I'm finished here today, you'll know why. Now, as for me, I'm not a medical doctor. I'm a physicist teaching at YSU. I use lasers in my work, and I honestly never set out to do exploratory medical research. But because of my laser experience, I've had the privilege of being asked to join a team of scientists, medical doctors, and business leaders that are dedicated to developing a, a completely different method of treating diseases. Specifically, we concentrate on the proteins that are known to cause the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. So I should step back and be sure I say, we are not currently developing a specific treatment plan. We're doing early proof of concept research that could develop into human treatments. That being said, the early results we are seeing are truly exciting and incredibly promising. Oh, this, I, this idea didn't just fall from the sky, okay? We're standing on the shoulders of genius. And to tell you about that, I need to dial the clock back about 20 years. Back in 2004, a radio executive named John Kansas from Erie, Pennsylvania, discovered something that has since led to medical advancements in cancer research. In his job, he was exposed to broadcast level radio waves, power generating equipment, the kind that power the radio towers you see everywhere. He noticed when he stood at the base of the towers that he would feel no heating of his body, but that the coins in his pocket would noticeably warm up. Simply put, he found that metal responds very differently to radio waves than our bodies do. So he proposed taking small medical, he said, why couldn't we take small metal particles, absorb enough energy from the radio waves, and put them close enough to cancer cells so that the radio waves could kill only the cancer cells? Inevitably, this fascinating concept led other medical researchers to join in his efforts to develop that brilliant idea. And he was deeply motivated because he was dying of leukemia at the time. And he was naturally impatient about the development of new treatments. So he made a radio wave generator machine, believe it or not, in his garage. And he directed the waves from the machine onto samples he got from medical research collaborators seeing some success. But unfortunately, the cancer ended his life before he could be cured. On the other hand, fortunately, this work he started has progressed. And now there have been profound advancements in cancer research using his idea. 
Now, I'm not part of that cancer research, but I'd like to describe it a little bit to you because it gives you context for the new ideas we have in, from our new team. Recent human clinical trials in cancer research have demonstrated Kansas's idea with antibodies. Now, these are antibodies like the ones you have in your immune system that help you fight diseases every day. But these antibodies were cancer antibodies, and they were attached to gold particles, tiny gold particles. These would partner together to form targeting agents. So the, the antibody particle partners would hunt for and would attach to only cancer cells. That way, medical researchers could irradiate the tissues, not enough to harm human tissue, but enough to heat these tiny gold particles. And then the cancer cells would be destroyed because of their proximity to these heated particles. This was precisely the way Kansas had imagined it. OK, these small particles are so small, there's fewer than 250 gold atoms in each one. That's what we call nanoparticles. Here's an American dime, worth 10 cents. If this dime were made of pure gold, this dime could provide enough nanoparticles for us to have over a million treatments. So we're not talking very much gold here. Also, the cancer treatments I mentioned use laser technology. And that brings us full circle back to why I'm the person sharing this story with you and not someone else. In our work, I'm the laser guy. So I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Mitch Felder. He's the neurologist I spoke of earlier, based in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And he was well informed of what the work Kansas did and the subsequent developments in cancer research using nanoparticles. But he's, as a neurologist, he was more focused on how the advancements could take nanoparticles and apply them to neurological diseases. He took the br brilliant idea of Kansas and took it a giant step further. He suggested thinking outside the box, but in this case, more literally, outside the body. He proposed to take the disease-causing proteins outside the body, where he could more easily destroy them, and then he could potentially return them back to the body more healthy, kind of like giving you an oil change. This out-of-the-body approach eliminates all concern of irradiating nearby tissues, which is pretty cool. And it seemed like that would be a lot safer. So let's focus on the specifics of Alzheimer's. If Dr. Felder's idea were taken, if Dr. Felder's idea were applied to the elevated proteins that cause the symptoms of Alzheimer's and are seen in the cerebral spinal fluid of patients who have Alzheimer's, the team would have to look at 10 different proteins, and here they are. Now, I'm not going to go through all of these individually, but elevated levels of these 10 proteins are directly responsible for the holes, the tangles, and the plaques that you hear about in Alzheimer's-affected patients. For the last seven months, our team has been developing antibodies for each of these proteins and connecting them to gold nanoparticles. These antibody particle pairs I like to call protein hunters because they act very much like a hunter would looking out for a specific target. They look a little bit like this conceptually. Now here's where it really begins to get interesting. So we take the protein hunters for a specific targeted protein and we add it to cerebral spinal fluid, which has been infected with the targeted protein. And we take that mixture and shine laser light on it, compliments of the laser guy. <laughs> and after the laser treatment, we measure to find out how many of the targeted proteins remain. That's our whole process. Before I go on to tell you some what I think are jaw-dropping observations, I feel obligated to introduce a few more people on the team as I've just discussed the sort of work they do. This is Dr. Sean Chen. He's a biochemist working at the Biodesign Institute in Tempe, Arizona. He conceptualizes and develops the protein hunters for us. And after laser treatment, he investigates the survival 
of the targeted proteins and other biological impacts. We also have a wonderful team of dedicated students at YSU working on the project and a valued advisory board that provides us with scientific direction and research funding and other support. Now here comes the incredible reveal, drum roll and all. We've observed destruction of all 10 proteins that cause Alzheimer's symptoms in 20 minutes of laser treatment or less. So 20 minutes or less. To give you some contrast, many disease treatments can take months and at times they can have complications like antibiotic resistance or bioavailability issues or even symptoms that are so severe they need drugs to mitigate them. Our approach, if taken to a treatment plan, would eliminate them in minutes, these proteins in minutes. It can't have any antibiotic resistance because we don't use any antibiotics. And there wouldn't be any secondary drug effects because we don't use any drugs. These proteins really have no choice but to heat up and die. If Kansas would have had a chocolate bar in his pocket next to those coins that heated up under the radio towers, it would have melted his chocolate bar. And that's a pretty good metaphor for what we're doing here. Now, to be sure, the research needs some refinements. We need to know the minimum amount of laser treatment for each protein and the concentration of the protein hunters needed. Basically, optimizing parameters. So what's next? What could we potentially do if we could attract more minds to our effort and hopefully additional research funding? We need to take a realistic view, but we should keep our eyes on the prize. The prize is, of course, a approved and successful Alzheimer's treatment plan. But that isn't the first step. The first step is really many steps, all the steps that are required to get an approved treatment plan through. Research refinements, uh, animal testing, and human clinical trials. What's more, there are several neurodegenerative diseases involving a subset of these problem proteins we've seen in Alzheimer's. If we could progress the Alzheimer's research far enough along, we could fast track the approval for these other diseases because the approval groundwork would already be laid. What if someday, when faced with a diagnosis of Alzheimer's, we could not respond with a long, tragic, heartbreaking goodbye, but instead with a go-to treatment plan with a promise of many years of vibrant living ahead? Thank you.